If you're learning Spanish, I recommend you check out Spanish Pod 101, which has a library of thousands of audio and video lessons for learners of all levels. Click the link in the description or visit langfocus.com slash SpanishPod for a free lifetime account and give it a try. With a language as widely spoken as Spanish, there's bound to be some variation in how it's spoken. There are differences in accent, of course, but also differences in vocabulary and grammar, especially in more colloquial speech. This is definitely the case with Chilean Spanish, which is known as one of the language's most unique varieties. The Spanish brought their language to what is now Peru and then to what is now Chile in the 16th century, when Spain conquered the Inca Empire, which included not only Peru, but also northern Chile. Chile was already populated by indigenous people who spoke indigenous languages, including Quechua and Aymara in the north, and Mapudungun in the south. Of course, these subjugated peoples were compelled to learn the language of their colonizers, Spanish, but their native languages also influenced the emerging Chilean variety of the language. Many of the Spanish colonizers who settled in Chile were from Andalusia in southern Spain, which influenced Chilean Spanish, notably in its intonation. Waves of immigration after the initial Spanish colonization also influenced Chilean Spanish. For example, there was heavy immigration from England in the north of the country and Germany in the south, as well as Italy, Switzerland, France, and other countries. With the extremely arid Atacama Desert in the north and with the Andes Mountains to the east, Chile was historically rather isolated and remote, which allowed Chilean Spanish to diverge somewhat from other varieties and develop its own flavor. There are significant differences in Chilean Spanish depending on socioeconomic background, with some of its most distinct features occurring mainly in very informal speech, which some Chileans look down on as the speech of poor people. In more formal speech, Chilean Spanish is firmly rooted in Castilian Spanish, but even formal publications and media use some uniquely Chilean idioms and vocabulary. Pronunciation. Like Latin American Spanish in general, Chilean Spanish features ceseo and yeismo. Ceseo is the pronunciation of Z and of C before I or E as S, rather than Th as it's pronounced in Spain. Yeismo is the pronunciation of Y and double L with the same sound, Y, though the exact sound varies somewhat depending on the accent. Most Spanish accents feature yeismo these days. Chilean Spanish is known for aspiration of the sound S when it occurs before a consonant or at the end of a word. For example, esto, meaning this, becomes esto. Papas fritas, meaning French fries, becomes papa frita. This occurs in some other varieties of Spanish as well, but in Chilean Spanish, it occurs in more context than in some of those other varieties. It should be noted, though, that this aspiration is mainly used in informal speech, especially in accents associated with lower socioeconomic status. Another feature is the elision of d and b. This happens in words that end with a vowel plus d or b plus a or o. For example, salada. The word for salty becomes sala, sala. Another example is this verb, which means was going through, pasaba, becomes pasa. Similarly, there's the elision of the rhotic consonant before n, m, and l. When the rhotic sound occurs before the sounds n, m, or l, it's omitted and the following consonant is doubled. For example, the word for meat, carne, becomes carne. And the word for brother, hermano, becomes hermano. Similar to the aspiration of S, this occurs in informal speech and is most common in rural accents and those associated with lower socioeconomic status. And that's also true for another feature, the replacement of the sound CH with the sound SH. The name of the country, Chile, sounds like Chile. Another example is this verb form, which means something like did you catch or did you know, Cachaste. sounds like Cachaste. But when people try to avoid this pronunciation, it sometimes results in hypercorrection, in particular for foreign loanwords. For example, show sounds like cho. Sushi sounds like sushi. Grammar. One feature of Chilean Spanish is boceo, the use of bos as the second person singular subject pronoun instead of tu, with special verb conjugations that agree with that pronoun. But boceo in Chile is somewhat different from boceo in other Spanish-speaking countries where it's used. Well, first of all, the final S in bos is usually aspirated, but some of the conjugations are also different. As a rule of thumb, boceo verb conjugations that end with as elsewhere end with ai in Chile, and those that end with es or eis end with i in Chile. As a result, the final S is completely absent from Chilean boceo. Eres. Meaning you are becomes eri. Eras. Meaning you were becomes erai. Tienes, meaning you have, becomes teni. Podrías, 
Meaning, could you becomes... Podríai. Cachas. Meaning, you catch or you understand becomes... Cachai. Check out this example sentence. This means, if you have free time, you can come visit me. Si tienes tiempo libre, podrías venir a visitarme. In Chilean Spanish... Si tenéis tiempo libre, podríais venir a visitarme. Notice that tienes becomes tení in Chilean voceo. And notice that podrías becomes podríai. It's important to point out that voceo is not always used in Chilean Spanish. And Chilean Spanish also has something called verbal voceo, in which voceo verb conjugations are used, but with the subject pronoun tú. Another element of Chilean Spanish grammar, specifically in varieties associated with lower socioeconomic status, is the doubling of object clitic pronouns, first in standard Spanish and then in Chilean Spanish. Te lo voy a dar. This means I'm going to give it to you. With a double object clitic, it's Te lo voy a dártelo. This includes reflexive object pronouns. Me voy a ir. This means I'm going to go. With the object clitics doubled, it's Me voy a irme. In informal speech, the imperative form of the verb is sometimes replaced with the present indicative third-person singular form. For example, here's a standard Spanish imperative sentence meaning make your bed. Haz tu cama. The usual imperative form of hacer, meaning to do or make, is haz. But in Chilean Spanish, hace, is used. Hace tu cama. Another feature of Chilean Spanish is the use of the prefix de to emphasize or intensify adjectives. Here's a standard Spanish sentence meaning, this game is really difficult. Este juego está muy difícil. In Chilean Spanish, you might hear, Este juego está re difícil. Notice that the prefix re is used instead of muy. Vocabulary. Some of the vocabulary used in Chile is not completely exclusive to Chile, but is used in certain other Latin American countries as well. For example, in Chile, the usual word for car is, Auto. Which is also used in Argentina, Bolivia, Ecuador, Paraguay, Peru, and Uruguay. The word used in most other parts of Latin America is carro, while coche is used in Spain. In Chile, the word for bus, specifically an intercity bus, is micro. This word is also used in Argentina, as well as in Mexico City, with the meaning of minibus. In other countries, words like autobús, camión, or omnibus are used. In Chile, the word for computer is computador, a word that's also used in Colombia. But in most other places in Latin America, the usual word is computadora. In Spain, the word is ordenador. Some words are used exclusively or almost exclusively in Chilean Spanish. In Chile, the word for light bulb is ampolleta. The most common word outside of Chile is bombilla, which refers to a drinking straw in Chile. In Chile, the word for a t-shirt is polera. Outside of Chile, the usual word is camiseta. In Chile, this refers to an undershirt rather than a t-shirt. In Chile, a baseball cap is referred to as a jockey. Outside of Chile, the usual word is gorra or gorra de baseball. There are a number of words for toilet in the Spanish language, one of them being retrete. The Chilean Spanish word is water or alternatively taza del baño, literally bowl of the bathroom. One special element of Chilean Spanish vocabulary is its loan words from indigenous languages, which are normally used in addition to native Spanish words with a similar meaning. The general Spanish word for baby is bebé. In Chilean Spanish, there's the word guagua, which comes from the Quechua and Aymara word for baby, guagua. This is also used in Bolivia, Ecuador, and some parts of Colombia and Peru. In general Spanish, the word for boyfriend is novio, and the word for girlfriend is novia. The Chilean Spanish words are pololo, for boyfriend, and polola, for girlfriend. Esta es mi polola, Carla. This is my girlfriend, Carla. These words come from the Mapudungun word, piulyu, which means acting like a fly, as in the insect. The meaning comes from the metaphor of a fly hovering around a fruit, the way a man or woman hovers around their desired partner. Another word of Mapudungun origin is pichintun, which means little or short, in the sense of quantity, like poco. Me queda un pichintun de jugo. I have little juice left. This comes from the Mapudungun word pichintun. The word for belly, guata. Me duele la guata. This means my belly hurts or I have a stomachache. The word meaning gossip. Cawin. Tengo un cawin para contarte. I've got some gossip to tell you. This word comes from the Mapuzungun word cawin, meaning party. The word was used to refer to a type of meeting where the heads of different tribes gather together to discuss various issues concerning their region, but also to socialize and gossip. That's why it's now used with the meaning of gossip. There's also Chilean Spanish slang, 
As you might expect, some of it's used in other Latin American countries as well, such as Bacán. This means cool or awesome. In addition to Chile, it's also used in Ecuador, Peru, Colombia, and Cuba. Este auto es bacán. This car is cool. Lo pasé bacán en la playa. I had a great time at the beach, or I had a fun time at the beach. But some slang is specifically Chilean. Al tiro. This means right now or right away. Ven al tiro a mi casa. Come to my house right now. It's used with an imperative or with an answer to an imperative. It literally means as the shot is fired. So it's like saying as fast as a bullet. Ya. Yeah. In general Spanish, this means now. In Chilean slang, it's used as an answer to a command, and it shows agreement in a similar way to OK. For example, this exchange meaning do your homework. OK. Haz tus tareas. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Hagamos esto. OK, let's do this. In this case, it's used as an answer to a command. Fome. This means boring. La película estuvo muy fome. The movie was pretty boring. Hacer perro muerto. This idiom literally means to do dead dog. This is a uniquely Chilean idiom meaning to leave a restaurant without paying your portion of the bill. Invité a mi amigo a comer, pero me hizo perro muerto. I invited my friend out to eat, but he did dead dog on me. Hacer la cimarra. This idiom means to skip class. Ayer hice la cimarra. I skipped class yesterday. Po. This word is used at the end of a sentence to emphatically express certainty or make an assertion. This corresponds with pues in general Spanish. Sí, po. Yes, of course. No, po. No way. Vamos, po. Well, let's go then. Este auto es más rápido, po. This car is faster, man. Cachar. This comes from the English verb to catch. It means different things depending on where it's placed in a sentence and the context in which it's used. It's used in Chile as well as Argentina and Bolivia. The imperative forms cacha and cachen mean look or listen and are used as a way to grab the attention of the listener. They usually appear at the beginning of the sentence. Cacha ese auto. Look at that car. Cacha que hoy fue al mall. Listen, today I went to the mall. Cachaste is used kind of like did you know or did you notice, did you see or haven't you heard, basically checking if you're aware of something. Cachaste que hoy fue al mall? Did you know that I went to the mall today? Cachai. Is used at the end of a sentence to check that the other person is still following what you're saying. Much like, right? And it functions as a filler. You don't need to respond to it. Hoy fui al mall. Cachai? Today I went to the mall, right? Cachar. Is also used with the meaning of catch or find out. Me cacharon. They caught me. As you can see, Chilean Spanish is a special and unique variety of Spanish. In many ways, it's similar to Latin American Spanish in general, especially the varieties of the southern cone of South America. But it also has its own unique features, vocabulary, and slang. When Chileans speak formally and avoid using specifically Chilean features, their speech is known for sounding particularly pleasant and neutral. Some people say this is because Chileans are very aware of how their dialects differ from others, and they're used to adjusting their speech to make it understandable for other people. And they even have to do that within Chile, because there are various varieties of speech that differ depending on location and socioeconomic background. The question of the day. To native speakers of Chilean Spanish, to what extent do you use the Chilean features mentioned in the video? Does it depend on the situation? And to other Spanish speakers, what's your impression of Chilean Spanish? And how well can you communicate with people from Chile? If you want to improve your Spanish, I recommend you check out Spanish Pod 101. Their course consists of thousands of user-friendly lessons broken down into playlists based on level and topic, so you can focus on exactly what you need to learn. I'm currently using Pod 101 courses for two other languages, and I especially like using their intermediate and advanced audio lessons to practice shadowing and to improve my listening comprehension. To sign up for a free lifetime account, click the link in the description or visit langfocus.com slash SpanishPod. And right now, it's time to say thanks to all the LangFocus Patreon supporters, especially the ones whose names appear right here on the screen. They are the top tier Patreon supporters, so many extra special thanks go out to them. Check out patreon.com slash langfocus to find out how you can become a patron too. And to everyone, thank you for watching and have a nice day.